All right, so Diana, I'll welcome you, and I'm sorry that we're starting late with you today, but welcome to, uh, it's Deanna, pardon me, and I'll have yeah, you introduce fine. yourself to us. So welcome, Deanna. Oh, I'm so happy. Ooh, host disabled participant. Could I share a screen, please? <laughs> Yes, I will do that right now. Okay. Well, so sorry, we are still learning about uh, technology, right? Uh, I am in Puerto Rico and it never occurred to us that I would be blocked because I would be in a foreign, you know, in a foreign country. <laughs> that had never happened to me before, but we finally figured it out. But, um, but I was really look. I just want you to know that I have been looking forward to this for, for several weeks now. So it, I, I really, I'm really sorry. But it's okay, I'm here. And there's so many things I would like to share with you. Um, let me see if I, let me start with uh, sharing the screen that will make it easier for me. Okay, one second. Wait, wait, wait. Please hold one second. I was all ready, but I, I had to turn off my computer so many times in order to connect that now. Okay, now share screen. Okay, so can you see my my map? Right? So what I would like to share with you this morning, because of all these things that have happened in the summer um, with the Black Lives Matter and all this uh, polarity in our society and stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, it's true that I know a lot about Latin American music, but I started, um, one of the things that, that I feel a lot of passion about it's um, about finding connection. You know, through music, I have found so many connections, especially historical, cultural, and emotional, and all the other connections too. But you would never imagine that um, from just from being an expert in Latin American music, I would have, I would also learn. I have learned so much about other cultures through my study of Latin American music. I have found connections with Jewish culture, for example. And one important uh, connection that I that I think w I would like to stress with you today is the connection with African uh, culture that exists in Latin America. Um, and I want to I want you to know that the fact I'm originally from Puerto Rico, the fact that I was born in Puerto Rico didn't doesn't mean that I knew anything about Latin America and Latin American music when I first arrived to this country. It was actually in this country where I started learning about Latin American music when I went to college and I met all these colleagues from Peru and, and Venezuela and, and Argentina. And the only thing we had in common was our language. But uh, then I started learning about their music. Uh, actually, that was what I call my informal education. When I was going to school to learn formal music, formal, edu formal music education, formal I, I, and on this side, I was learning about all this folk music, beautiful folk music. So I want to start by asking you, what do you know about diaspora? What, what does it mean? Uh, what is the meaning of a diaspora? Uh, we didn't have much time, so I'm just going to read what I have here, right? It refers to when you have communities, in this case, communities of people of African descent, they are dispersed all through our world, all through the, 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 the world. And as, a, as in this case, as a result of historical movements, uh, which was slavery, there's no other reason for the, that was what, what started the African diaspora. Uh, the, um, yeah, it was a result of, the, of slave trades, and that was the largest forced migration in history. We, we never think about it that way, right? And one interesting thing, thing that I think with, is, I was fascinated by these numbers. You know, when we associate African diaspora with the United States, in the United States, but we don't think that it happened in the rest of the Americas. And look at those numbers. Only 5% of the African slaves went to the United States. 95% of that slave uh, trade ended up in Central, South America, and the Caribbean. 
And uh, imagine more than 11 people were dispersed because of those uh, forced migrations. And where do they come from? Mostly from West, we, we know that, as the same thing in the United States, mostly from West uh, Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, for example, or from Central Africa, mostly from Congo and, and Cameroon. Uh, is there anything that here that were, uh, that you didn't know before? I'm just curious. Is this something that something I'll know? I think that for me, the this this the fact that only five percent of the African slaves ended up in the United States that was a very uh, fascinating fact for me. I knew. Okay, so I'm going to make. The, I was asked to make this a very interactive uh, workshop for you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you this by rote. This is a villancico from the colonial times. You are all aware that villancico is this music form that was um, a, from Spain, right? We studied the madrigals from Italy and from Spain we, we bring the villancico. The villancico arrived to Latin America through the Spaniards and then uh, some villancicos started being created in the col during the colonial times. This one is very special because it was a it was found in, um, when you think of South America, at least when I thought about South America, I never thought about African culture. I mostly think about the Andi, and the, I think about the tango, I think about the, actually tango, it's, it has African influence, but that's for another workshop. <laughs> um, but I mostly think about the, the music from the Andes, from the mountains, the charango, the palm pipes, stuff like that, especially when I think about Bolivia. And this villancico was found in a monastery in Cochabamba, and Cochabamba, it's high in the mountains, in the Andes. So that tells you that slavery was all over South America, in, in every part. And this is actually published by Busy and Hawk, so I, I tried to share with you the, the uh, publishers, but, but I'm gonna teach it to you by rote, because the first time I heard this, I heard it from a, from a children music uh, ensemble from Chile, and I loved it. And the cool thing about this Villancico is that it's very, um, it's written in call and response style. So your, your response is gonna be the ha ha ha. And we're gonna add some precaution to this. So we're gonna do tap, 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 okay? And then I will sing Esta noche yo baila, and you're going to answer, ha, 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 con María Lucume, he, 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 hasta el sol que amanece, ha, 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 por mi Dios que está acuya, he, 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 he. El me manda mi canta, ha, 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 canto hasta amanecer, je, 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 je. que su hijito va a nacer, ha, 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 je, je, je. Okay, so that was just the rehearsal. We'll do it again. So I just want you to pay attention to what it's, the African influence already in this, right? We have the corner response. And the other things I noticed is that the, the Spanish, it's written the way blacks spoke, okay? So this is not, it's, it's just like in slang, let's say. Exam for example, esta noche yo baila, instead of bailar, o voy a bailar, yo baila. Right, they is with a, we are we are eliminating some consonants there. The name Lukume sounds very African to me. Um, there are actually words that I don't know. Por mi Dios que acuya, I actually don't know what it means. But and then um, it's it's a Christmas carol. I don't know if you noticed that. So they're all dancing with Maria Lukume, and he's he's asking me. God is asking me to to sing. Um, and I'm gonna sing until dawn, hasta amanecer, it's, it's supposed to be amanecer. 
hasta amanecer, que su hijito va a nacer, that his little, that the little um, eh, baby is going to be born, right? So it's announcing the, the baby born. Okay, so let's do it again. So I'm imagining that we sound very cool. You cannot percuss, you cannot... You can add other patterns if you want. It's up to you, okay? But I want to. I want to see all your, your, all of you singing this time. I'll do it a little bit higher. Let's start with percussion. Ready? Go. Ah. A little bit faster. Esta noche yo baila, ha, 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 con María Lucume, he, 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 hasta el sol que amanece. Ha, 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 por mi Dios que está a tuya, je, 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 él me manda a mí cantar, ha, 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 yo canto hasta amanecer, je, 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 que su hijito ya nace, ha, 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 je, je, je. Ha, 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 he, he, he. Great, right? So I actually did this with my, my group, Cantigas. I, for 25 years, I, I, I conducted a choir that I had founded in Washington, D.C., where we specialize in repertoire from Latin America. And we opened many Christmas, we call them Christmas years because they were Latin American Christmas, uh, with this Villancico, and we made it into a sing-along with the audience. So um, since we are in South America, when I, I would like to take you to Peru. Again, when I uh, thought about Peru, when I first came to this country, I didn't know, I didn't know at all about the African, strong African influence in the, in the culture of Peru. Um, there were many, um, there's some African descent communities on the Pacific coast. Uh, and I was reading, it's very interesting that in Peru, they basically tried to erase this, this culture for, for centuries, right? It's like the, the Africans, the African Peruvians were actually not acknowledged for many years. Then in the 50s, there was like a movement which was actually influenced by the civil rights from the United States. You have to know that that's a, a movement that influenced many other movements around the world. And uh, let me see if I can, because you're probably, can you hear all the noise in the background? Let me see if this will connect. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, I hope this, this will help a little bit. Um, in the 50s, they started this movement uh, trying to um, rescue those uh, musical African, Peru, Afro-Peruvian traditions. And there was a, a, many people started working on that. They started collecting and publishing, writing down. And, and now, now we cannot, the, the um, well, the, the influence is so strong that if you look at this picture here, you see the cajon, which I'm sure many of you have in your, in your classrooms. The cajon comes from Peru. That was an invention of the, the Afro-Peruvians. And you didn't have to, to be super creative to figure out that they were not allowed to play uh, drums or they didn't have their original drums, but they just created the drums out of, literally, out of boxes, right? They also use the donkey jewel um, for the rhythms. And I was very sad that there was not a lot, there was nothing published in the US. Of course, they have arrangements, but they're not published. So I decided that I, I would make an arrangement of the festejo. Festejo is one of those Afro-Peruvian uh, genres. Festejo actually is a, is a rhythm but it also means celebration. So I don't need to tell you that it's a very festive rhythm. Um, and let's see if I can, <laughs> I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna play for you. We are gonna do it interactive. I, would, I was going to show you the, okay, let me see if I can find it very quickly. My, no. Let's keep this simple. I'm just 
just going to show you that we are going to do it by roads again. Okay, but first I need to teach you the, the rhythmic pattern. Um, I'm imitating the rhythm of the drums. We're going to do ta 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 pam pam ta 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 pam pam ta 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 pam pam pam. Okay, let's try that again. Ready, go. Pa 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 pam pa pa ta 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 pa 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 ta 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 pa pa ta 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 pa pa pa. Okay, and the second time is ta 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 pa pam pam pa pam. Let's try that again. Ta 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 pa pam pam pa pam. Okay. Now this is going to be published by Hal Leonard. They're they're already editing it. And everything, the arrangement and this recording that you're going to see on a cappella, everything I did during the quarantine. So I guess quarantine actually has some silver lining because I finally had the time to put this festejo together. So it goes like this. Okay. You see, tell me if you can hear it. There. No? Oh! No! You cannot hear that. Hmm. How come? If it's here. Do, is there anyone there that is good at uh, with technology? Hey, Diana, did if you um, share with sound when you shared your screen? Let's see. Do you want to reshare, maybe? Share. Ah. Uh, oops. Or, or maybe yes. your ear. That was easy. No, no, no. Let, let's see. Let's try this because now I, I hit share sound. Let's see. <laughs> Where's the play again? No? Mm. Ah, no, that's frustrating because I have so many things like that. Do you think it might be because you're on your earphones? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's, okay. Yes, you're right. Okay. So let me see. Okay. Now. You think you get better at these things? Can you hear my, my voice? Okay. Are the AirPods disconnected? Say that again. Are the AirPods disconnected? No, let me disconnect. Ah, yes, Mia, this is horrible. Okay, you can hear me, right? At least you can hear me. Uh... Ah!
Okay, so uh, so that's that's this um, amazing rhythm of from Peru. That do you think that we should know more about these rhythms? And then you could add a cajon to that. So what I was trying to imitate was the the, the rhythmic pattern of the cajon. Sometimes with the donkey, they go. So, so our, our vibra slap actually comes from, it's, 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 that's the origin of the vibra slap, the donkey jo. Okay, so let me go back to my, my, because it actually helps me. So from Colombia, uh, when we think Venezuela and Colombia also have a very strong African influence. And you may have heard this uh, beautiful arrangement, Maque, uh, Maquerule, is a very um, popular. So I'm just gonna play a little bit and I want you to know that uh, in Colombia, one of the things I learned is that they actually share two coasts. And the, the, just like in some of the countries in Central America, and the Afro cultures are very different. One thing is the Afro culture from the Atlantic, they use some instruments. If you go to the Pacific coast of Colombia, it's a very culturally uh, very different, uh, different, different patterns and different instruments. For example, in the Pacific, they, they even use the, the marimba that they don't use in the Atlantic. Very, very interesting. So here you go. This is a little bit of um, OK. It's not going to work. I'm going to keep going. So write that down, please, because that's a great arrangement. It's for SSA, and it's published by Hal Leonard. Maquerule, and it's very simple, but it's it's simple, but it's it's, it's challenging at the same time. It has a lot of call and response. You could notice the the same the same characteristics you find in in other of the Afro um, Latin American music. So now I want to open and I want to ask you. Actually, let me put it out. Who could tell me what syncretism is? Have you ever heard the word syncretism? And who could um, ju I sh just shut out, you know, <laughs> speak out because I can't see you. So who could volunteer and tell me what you, what do you understand for syncretism? Melanie, no. Anyone? No, no volunteers. You don't want to guess. It's, it's okay. It's, uh... uh -huh. Uh, sorry, isn't it like just like religions, like sort of combining, like so there's elements from both religions? Yes. And then you okay. kind of get that in the music or culture. Yes, yes, thank you. Exactly, that's what it is. You take elements from one religion or from the other and they get together and that happened a lot in Latin America, especially in, in Cuba and, and Brazil where there's such a strong African presence, right? Um, to the point that in, um, in Cuba, uh, 
those who practice the, the santeria, which is the a syncretist, uh, uh, I don't know how you call it, syncretic? I don't know how you say it, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's santeria is, is, is an example of that syncretism. They, their chants are sang in Yoruba, and Yoruba, it's a language from Nigeria. So talking about connections, historical connection, I think that is fascinating. Um, and uh, so I, I, there's a, a chant that is very common, very popular, it's called Yemaya. And uh, I'm gonna teach it to you also by rote. Uh, Yemaya is the, um, it, I was just thinking about the conversation you were having right when I, when I joined you. How can you explain this to, to your students who say they're Christian and I shouldn't be singing this voodoo music? But I think the way I present it, first I think um, I would stress the historical importance, right? Or I would ex also explain this, this um, I would explain it as a fusion of cultures, or I also like the idea that Yemaya is um, a woman deity, and that's very empowering to me. And it should be empowering for women, and that they would see her as the, um, she represents water, the movement of water. And because they, because life comes from water, from the ocean, she's also like the mother of all life. So it's very, it's the, the whole image is very empowering. And uh, it goes like this. So I, I'm gonna, I also made an arrangement of this, um, of this chant, but I wanna, I, I just, I would teach it if I were gonna, uh, every time I teach this piece, I start by road because you cannot think of the, of the rhythm too much. You, you just have to learn it by road and feel very comfortable with the, with the melody. And it goes like this. Yemaya asesu, asesu yemaya. Then you repeat. Yemaya asesu. Asesu yemaya, yemaya olodo, olodo yemaya, yemaya olodo, olodo yemaya. So I know I took it. But why don't you sing with me? Let's sing it together. Yemaya asesu, asesu yemaya. Yemaya asesu, asesu yemaya. Yemaya olodo, olodo yemaya. Yemaya olodo, olodo yemaya. And what I was clapping is the, it's a very cute, it's a Cuban rhythmic pattern that is very. Very common. In six, eight, right? Okay, so I'll just play for you. Oh my God, I hope it works. This are you on. How did it work when I tried yesterday? If you go go up to slideshow and play from the slide, I think it will. Play from current slide. <laughs> you should play, you should play, you play. No, because it really need. That's so weird. Very, very frustrating. I was so happy that the that PowerPoints was so much easier when I when I was working on this the last two days. Wow, I can actually insert all these beautiful things here. Well. The other thing I could do is this, one second. 
because I really want you to play this, to, to hear it. Mm. How much longer do I have? Because maybe I can keep moving. Hey, Diana. I was just sending you a message. We've got five minutes left. But ah, okay. So let's keep going. Okay, let's keep going. Then. And maybe you okay. send us your PowerPoint and we can share that. That's what I'll do. Thank right. you. That's a great idea. Okay, okay. That's what I'll do. But you got to learn, you learn the, the chant, which is the most important one. So uh, this is perfect because this is what I wanted to finish with, with salsa music. Um, and I wanted to ask you, what do you know about salsa and where does salsa come from? Where do you think salsa comes from, the salsa music? I'm going to call someone. Let's see. Uh, Michelle Suckman, where do you see, think salsa comes from? Um, I think it's a style of dance music, but I'm not sure what country it comes from. Okay, great. Yes, it's, it's dance music, definitely. Yes, okay. So, I love salsa. It originated in New York City. There was, um, you know, I don't know if you've heard about Ruben Blades, Ruben Blades, who's a Panamanian salsa singer. It, he described it as urban folklore at the international level because it was a, a fusion of, if you want to do like a, talk about connections in music, historical connections, here you have it. You have the influence of African music, Cuban music, Puerto Rican music, and jazz. Because you have all these wonderful musicians living in New York, and now they have the sounds of the big bands and jazz and and uh, these beautiful um, brass um, ensembles, right, of jazz. And and when they put it together with uh, with their Cuban Puerto Rican rhythms, that's that's what we call salsa. So it's a phenomenon from the basically from the '60s on, right? And there you have vocals, you have brass, you have piano the bass, then you have the percussion part where you have conga, cowbell, timbales, etc. There's call and response, of course, and there's a lot of improvisation on the call and response. So since my videos are not working, maybe this will work because this is the, yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna teach you very quickly and we'll finish with this. The, the, the chorus, the last part of Catalina La O. This is a salsa name. It's, it's called, oh, it's called Catalina La O. Sorry, it's not showing. And it's by Suzette Ortiz and it's just published. It was just published this year. And I highly recommend it because I don't think you're gonna find salsa arrange good salsa arrangements i've never seen one and this is a great arrangement it has the structures the, the verse with the part of the chorus where there's improvisation the improvisation part is written down but what we'll do for you to get the taste of it i'm going to improvise and you're going to sing the the call okay so tan, 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 tan. so you are going to sing catalina la o catalina la o Okay, everyone, one, two, three. Catalina la O, pa, 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 pa. Catalina la O, again. Catalina la O, pa, 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 pa. Catalina la O, and then you can harmonize to that, to that, okay? Catalina la O, you can do any harmony you want to do. So, because we don't have time, let's just play it. With, this is Suzette, my friend Suzette. I asked her to play the piano part only so we can do a sing-along of Catalina. And I'll do the, I'll, I'll improvise. So don't laugh, okay, of my improvisations. Okay, let's go. No. <laughs> Catalina la O. Catalina la O. And feel free to improvise or to harmonize. E oye Catalina, yo te canto mi canción. Catalina la o. You can keep the beat. Catalina la o. 
Oye, Catalina, Catalina, I'm so happy to be singing with you today. Catalina la O, Catalina la O. Thank you very much for inviting me this morning. I'm so sorry for the technology. Catalina la O, Catalina la O. I hope you've learned something today. At least I wish you've learned something, even with all the mess. Catalina la O. Catalina la O. Oye, Catalina. Oye, Catalina. Ay, Catalina. Oye, la O. Catalina la O. Catalina la O. Someone wants to improvise? You can have your students improvise. Catalina la O. Catalina la O. Plenas de romance, dicha y canción. Esta es una canción de amor. Catalina la O. Catalina la O. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, I am really sorry that it happened because I just wanted, I, I wanted to end with this um, picture of my home, the way I grew up. One of the questions is how many instruments do you see there? I come from a very musical family. And that's part of that African influence, I think. All these, these instruments there are the cajon, the congas, okay? So thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, you can feel free to write to me. We should, I should have shared my email, but I, I'm sure that uh, you'll get that with a copy of the, of the PowerPoint, okay? Yes, thank you so much, Diana. All sure, right, everyone, we are you. on break until 10.30 and we'll see you then. Get some okay, coffee. Okay, bye everyone. <laughs>